uh, uh, how that we need to discipline our lives to follow after uh, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, uh, it's what the world needs. Amen. Is uh, some godly men. Amen. Leading and guiding the way. And uh, uh, I know there was some people in this room that could probably have taught that a whole lot better than me. Could probably teach the one we're going to be teaching not a whole lot better than me, but. Um, we're going to do what the Lord give us here and, and uh, uh, go with it there. But, uh, if you have your Bibles, tonight, turn to Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. Uh, we're going to uh, uh, take a text verse from there, and the text verse there is going to be verse 5 uh, out of uh, Philippians 2. Uh, talking about the mind tonight and uh, uh, that text verse is let this mind be in you which is also in Christ Jesus amen so uh, how many of us in here uh, would agree tonight that uh, we need uh, more Jesus Christ and less to say of amen? amen we we come to that conclusion last week uh, we need to be like John the Baptist uh, and uh, where he says you know I must decrease and he must increase amen so um, tonight uh, we're going to pray and, and then we'll go ahead and get started with the reading of God's word and give you what God has given us here um, so let's pray right quick and then we'll get started God our heavenly father we come to you tonight thankful again for this opportunity to be in your house thankful for the opportunity to stand in your presence here again tonight God Lord as I stand Lord behind this uh, desk precious desk tonight I pray God that you use me as your mouthpiece God uh, give me the words that you'd have me to say the words that I need not to say take away from me I pray oh God and Lord just use me Lord uh, as a vessel pour me out here Lord that, that uh, I may be a help to these men that's sitting in this room tonight God and Lord touch all those uh, teachers that's uh, standing before the other classes God give them that's needed That's needed, uh, Lord to just teach uh, preach us saith the Lord and God will sure thank you for what you're doing in our lives Amen uh, Tonight I want to uh, as we're talking about the mind I, I got to thinking about just what a precious gift that God gives us in the mind, Brother Dillon. You think about that. This mind is a precious gift from God. Uh, I, I pulled up 10 interesting facts about the human brain. And I want you to listen to some of these, some of these facts on the human brain before we get into our lesson here tonight. It says the human brain weighs about three pounds. Oh, but I never thought that, Brother Dillon. <laughs> Yep. Uh, it com uh, comprises of 60% of fat and is one of the fattest organs in the human body. <laughs> fat. The brain is fat. Amen. <laughs> Fathead is a true statement. <laughs> amen. Yeah, so, amen. But number three, the human brain has the capacity to generate uh, approximately 23 watts of power when we're awake. That's a lot. That's enough to light a light bulb. Oh, yeah. That's a lot. Amen. Uh, number four, of the total blood and oxygen that is produced in our body, the brain gets 20% of it. So it's a pig too, okay? It likes 20% of that. Amen. It says when the blood supply to the brain stops, it is almost after 8 to 10 seconds that the brain starts losing the consciousness of itself. So can't live long without that oxygen, amen? Uh, amen, we all need that air, amen? And, and it, it wants a lot of that air. Number six, the brain is capable of surviving for five to six minutes only if it doesn't get oxygen after which it dies completely. Uh, the, number seven, the blood vessels that are present in the brain are almost 100,000 miles in length. Think about that just for a minute. 100,000 miles in length. The blood vessels just within the brain in the human body. That's unbelievable, Brother Dylan. Amen. God is amazing. Amen. Just amazing. Um, number eight, there are ten, uh, 100 billion neurons present in the brain. 100 billion. That's a lot. Amen. Uh, number nine, it says in early pregnancy, the neurons develop at an alarming rate of 250,000 per minute. That's a lot. Yeah, it says there are 100 billion neurons present in the brain. 
In early pregnancy, the neurons develop at an alarming rate of 250,000 per minute. God's amazing. Amen. And He's given us everyone a, a, a mind in here, a brain. Number 10, as we grow older, we are, not, we are unable to remember new things. According to the researchers in the U.S., it is because the brain is unable to filter and remove old memories which prevent it from absorbing new ideas. Amen. Uh, God, is, it, He's given us a gift in, in the human brain here, in the mind. Uh, so tonight, I, if you've got your Bible, I want you to turn over to uh, Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. And we're going to read of these eight, or seven, or yeah, I said seven, one through eight. Uh, we're going to read these eight verses, and then we'll get started tonight with what God has given me here. It says this in Philippians 2. One, it says, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels, bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye may be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and one mind. Let nothing be done through stri strive or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, her text verse, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no repetition and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and become obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So this week we're going to be talking about uh, the need to discipline our minds. Uh, as we done uh, said here, God has given us the gift of our mind. Uh, but do we use it? With that said, do we use it to glorify God or do we waste the input we're putting into it? So, Dylan, if I come to you and ask you, what are you doing with the mind that God gave you? Are you filling it with some good things? Are you filling it with bad things? What are you doing with the mind? I want us to think about that just for a minute. The mind, what are we doing with it? You see, God has given us, He's given us that gift. It's just like a computer. You think of it just like a computer. Whatever you put in good, you're going to get out good. Whatever you put in bad, you're going to get out bad, Brother Stefan. That's right. And, and you know, I stopped and thought about that. As I thought about the, the, the mind being like a computer. I thought about, you think about the things that we let pass through our mind, mm -hmm. through our eye sockets, each and every day of our life. And you know what? Some of it's good, Brother Fred, but a whole lot of it is bad. And we choose that bad. You say, not me, Brother Gary. Oh, not me. <laughs> not me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, me too. We choose what we want to put in this mind. Amen? So I want us to, to look at this amazing gift that God's give us here. Uh, and, and I want us to look how that we can train our mind to be disciplined. The only way that we can train the mind to be disciplined is through Jesus Christ Amen. and having the mind of Christ. What was the mind of Christ? Let me ask somebody that. Anybody want to try to answer that question? What was the mind of Christ? Pure. pure. It was pure. Okay. Anybody else? It's just the mind of God. The mind of God. The answer I was looking for. The mind of God. Hey, you turn over to John chapter 17 and you read John chapter 17 and, and, and uh, you, you just see what uh, Jesus Christ came to do on this earth. I'm going to turn over there just for a minute and I'm going to read to you some things uh, in there. Uh, I feel like it's worthy to read some of these. This is, is Jesus talking back to the Father in heaven. And in John chapter 17, verse 1, it says these, These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son that thy Son also may glorify thee. 
as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Watch this now, verse 4. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou givest to me to do. Amen. Verse 5, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. You know what? You know what that verse tells me, Brother Stephon? That verse is telling me that, that Jesus Christ knew the mind of God before he ever left heaven. He knew what was on God's mind, the Father's mind, and he said, Father, I'll go. And he come to this earth in the fashion of a man, Brother Dylan, knowing the mind of Christ, knowing what he was going to have to do while he was here. Hey, it says he was without sin. Amen? But it also said he knows every feeling that we had, everything that we have to experience, but yet it's without sin. How is that possible, Brother Stephon? Because he had the mind of Christ, the mind of God. His Father. He knew it before He ever left. He come to this earth. And you know what He come to this earth to do? He come to this earth to give us the mind of the Father. And I tell you, the mind of the Father is a great gift. Amen? And I asked you tonight, what are you doing with that gift? That mind, that hard drive, that computer, that God give us up here in a old fat head, Brother Dylan. Amen? Amen. What are we doing with it? Are we putting more bad in it than we are good? You say, Brother Gary, why do you keep saying that? Because I know, I know the flesh. I know the flesh. I know how weak the flesh is. It's weak. And when the flesh gets weak, the spirit that's in us gets to come to where it gets weaker and weaker because we let the old man that we talked about last week take place of the new man that we should be with that new mind is gone to the side and the old mind has come back into the play and we start picking up those things of the world. Start picking the things of the world up. You know, I want to remind you that it's only by the work of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit that we can train this mind. That's right. Amen? And have that mind of Christ. There's two verses here that are helpful, I think, if you want to pin these down. 1 Corinthians 2.16 says this, For whom hath known the mind of the Lord? That verse is saying, who's known the mind of the Lord? There ain't nobody can know the mind of the Lord, Brother Dylan. There ain't nobody can know the mind of the Lord except one person. Watch what the end, end of that verse says right here. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Hey, how many of us in here profess that we've been saved and we know it? Amen? You have the mind of Christ. What are you doing with it tonight? Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Well known verse. Jason White quotes this verse all the time and are you. Amen. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Get that. Your reasonable service. And it says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect, watch this, will of God. Amen. What's that verse saying? It's saying that we need to renew. When you renew something, what do you do? Somebody tell me, what's that word renew mean to you? Anybody? Start, again. You? Start, start again. Start again. Brother Dylan, what would you say? Trade it, in. Trade, in, trade it in. Trade it in, okay. Anybody else want to take a stab? Renewing. When you renew something, you start it over. Amen. How many times, how many times have you had to go back in 
and, and go to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm sorry for what I've done. This sin that I committed, I, I'm sorry for this. Would you renew within me that right spirit? You know how you get a renewed mind? You ask for the renewed spirit within you. What is the renewed spirit? Hey, it's the Word of God. You need more of the Word of God in you. Renewed spirit. And it goes on to say that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hey, when we get the renewing back in our mind, you know what we're doing, Brother Dylan? Hey, we're, we're, we're showing the world that we live in, the workplace that we go to every day, that we serve a perfect God. Amen? Amen. Amen. The, and, and, and he wants us to show them what he's done in our life by the renewing of our mind. They may know you. They may know what you're doing. But you can renew that mind to show them a different side of you that you truly are. Amen. But a lot of us, I'm going to tell you, the lot, a lot of us, including myself, we like the flesh. There's some flesh that we desire, Brother Dylan. And that's why we can't get that mind renewed on a daily basis. Because we love living in the flesh. Just being honest with you. You may not like that. May not be very popular. But it's the truth. Amen. It's the truth. In these two verses, I see the foundation for discipline the mind. If we're to transform a disciplined mind, it must be through seeking God and stopping out everything that's of the world. Hey, it, 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 I, I can't think of the verse right off, but it says, greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world. John 4.4. 4. Yeah, first John 4.4. 4. I've got it pinned down here at the bottom somewhere. But hey, he's within us and he's greater than anything in this world. Amen? So we see the foundation here for the discipline of the mind is, is to, to go back and realize that we have the mind of Christ and, and we can renew that, that uh, mind of Christ on a daily basis. We need to do it on a daily basis. Hey, you think about when Jesus Christ walked this earth, when he walked this earth, he began his ministry you read the many times, you go through the Bible and you underline the many times it said he departed into the mountain to pray. What was he departing for, Brother Dylan? To renew that mind. To get it focused. To get it lined up with the Father. So that he could leave that mountain. He could go walking on the waters of that sea to those distressed disciples that was in that boat that night that thought they was going under. Amen? Because they didn't have that renewed mind. Because you see, Jesus, he, when he put them in that boat, he just had done a great miracle, Brother Fred. He had fed the 5,000, plus all the men and the women that was around them there. And he had given them 12 baskets of fragments to carry along the way with them when they got in that boat to remind them of the miracle that he just performed. But they got in that boat. And because they was living in the flesh, Brother Dylan, and they weren't as close to the Father or to the, to the, to the Savior as they should have been, they began to be fearful. Thought they was going under. And here come the Master walking on the sea. Just spoke, stilled the waters, and you know where they ended up? On the other side, just like He told them. Renewing the mind. Discipline the mind. As we go on here, we, we will talk about those 12 disciples. Jesus, that's, that's what he was trying his best to do with the 12 disciples. He, was, he went out and handpicked those 12 disciples. And you know what he was wanting to do with those 12 disciples, Brother Dylan? He was wanting to discipline their minds with Christ, with the Savior that they was walking with. But they couldn't get it. They couldn't get it. You know, they began to sit around and there was three other, three of them, Peter, James, and John, and they began to argue with each other about who was going to be first in the kingdom. That was on their mind. That's of the flesh. Would you agree with me? We like to be first, do we, Brother Stephon? Well, I want to be noticed for teaching that class over there. I want to be noticed for doing this. I want to be noticed for doing that. Hey, that's of the flesh. 
That's not having a renewed mind. Hey, if the pastor asks somebody to do something, you ought to pray for that person and say, Lord, thank you for that person being willing to do it. Because the next go around, it may be your turn. Amen. And you'll need somebody to be praying for you Amen. as you stand. Yes, Amen. Amen. So we see that that's exactly what he was trying to do with these, with these 12 disciples as they walked close to him, but they couldn't get it. And can I say that's exactly what he's trying to do with us in this room tonight. And with each and every day that we get up, he's trying to show us, hey, if you'll follow me, Brother Dylan, if you'll follow me, Brother Fred, I'll show you how to keep a renewed mind, a disciplined mind to where you can keep your mind focused on the Father and the things that the Father wants you to be interested in. And we'll do away with all of the, the, the pornography and, and, and all of the, the things that we see on TV and, and all of the video games that shows nothing but killing. Hey, we, we put our kids... Boy, I got to thinking about that, brother, brother uh, uh, Bob. I got to thinking about that, and I thought, man, what? Uh, how big of an idiot can we be? We'll go out and spend hundreds of dollars, and we'll give our kids video games that shows them how to kill somebody else. But yet their Bible's laying on the dresser, and we'll never one time tell them to pick it up. I was guilty of that, brother Dylan. I was guilty of that. I'd go in Aaron's bedroom, he'd be sitting there playing an army game. You said, Well, it's just an army game. I don't care. It's somebody killing somebody else. Right. And I know there's a time for war. I'm not saying that. I know that. But it showed blood splattering everywhere, and the wicked things of the world is what they're learning off of that. And then the other things that they can pick up through those PlayStation systems. Hey, our young people's very smart. They've got that mind. But they're, they're smart. They know how to get to those places. If you don't believe me, if you've got a teenager, take his phone away from him. Check it. See where he's been or where she's been or what they're doing on there. They're smart. But he's trying to do the same thing with us as he was doing with those disciples. He's trying to show us how to have that renewed mind and keep, keep our focus on the Father which, which the, 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 the discipline comes from. Hey, he, he, was our, he was our teacher here on this side of heaven, Brother Dylan, as he walked. This book is full of, of how Jesus walked doing great things for God. His mind was, he had blinders on around him a lot of times. It was focused on what the Father would have him to do. A disciplined mind. You say, yeah, but that was Christ. But the Bible just tells us we have the mind of Christ Amen. if we're saved. But what are we doing with the mind that he gave us when he saved us? I'm afraid we're filling it with the things of the world. Amen? As I go on here, I was, I've been reading that book by Ken Hughes that the pastor gave me, uh, The Disciplines of a Godly Man. I, I kind of shared a little bit of that with you last week, but there was, a, there was a quote that he made in this book that challenged me, Brother Dylan. And I'm going to read this quote to you all tonight. It was this. The quote is, The great scandal of today's church is that Christians are without Christian minds. Christians who don't think like Christians should. He goes on, many times we're content with just being Christians, putting on the show of praying, worshiping like we're supposed to, but never seeking the mind of Christ, never asking Christ for the renewed mind that we may worship him in spirit and truth. You know what that quote was saying, Brother Dylan? We get dressed up, we come to church on Sunday mornings, and we never one time seek the Father before we get here. Saying, Father, what's the will today? How, how, how would you align me with your will today that I may go in and, and, and worship you in spirit and truth with a disciplined mind? See, when the disciplined mind is right, the heart and the mind together does great things. You can truly worship but we come in, 
so burdened down with what happened yesterday or what happened that morning before we got to church that we forgot how to worship. That's a shame, but Stefan. And I've been guilty of it. Many, many a times I've been guilty of it. He goes on to say this. He says, let me ask you, do we have a worldview that reflects Christ and His character? Or are we just content with floating down the river of the world, blissfully ignorant of the great falls that lies before us? What's he saying? Hey, do we have that mind or are we just floating along life's way and we're headed for destruction? I've always told Aaron this. I said, Aaron, if I, see you, if I ever see you going down the road and I know that the bridge is out on the other side, I'm not going to let you go down that road. I'm not going to do it. Whatever it takes, I'm going to turn you around. Amen. That's what he's talking about. Amen. But we as Christians... We have the mindset that we're just going to focus on poor old Gary, poor Fred, poor old Dylan, poor old Bob. My life, boy, it's just not much. And the whole time, we have Jesus Christ living within us. We have the mind of Christ, but we've not renewed it enough to know we have it or use it. Shame on us. Amen? Shame on us. Number two, I want us to see here the instructions from God's word on what we need to put into our mind. I love this scripture. I love this scripture. Philippians 4.8. If you've got your Bible, turn over to Philippians 4.8. This is some things that we need to put in our mind, that we need to, to put in our, our everyday prayer life, our everyday reading. We get up and we'd read this verse maybe every morning. We could remember, Brother Dylan, the things that we need to be doing throughout the day. It says this, Philippians 4 8. Finally, brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if, virtue, if there be any praise, Think on these things. Think on these things. What things? Those things we just mentioned. The true things. The honest things. The just things. The pure things. The lovely things. The things of good report. You said, but Brother Gary, you ain't been in my workplace. You ain't been in my everyday walk of life. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't do that. You can, because you have the mind of Christ in you. Amen. You know what you got to do to get there? You got to discipline it. You got to get up and get that old black Bible or that whatever color your Bible may be. You need to open it up to that every morning. You need to go to the spiritual gym and work out in those verses. And say, God, help me. Help me today to see the things that's true, that's honest, that's pure, that's just, that's lovely. He's got that all around us, Brother Dylan. But we got our blinders on. We got our mind focused on poor old Gary. Been there many, many times. Many, many times been there. I want you to notice in that, in, in that verse, Philippians 4, 8, that verse is a command. If you read it, it's a command. Finally, my brother, what sort of things are true? What sort of things are honest? What sort of things are just? What sort of things are pure? What sort of things are lovely? What sort of things are good report? If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, watch it now. Think on these things. He's telling us, think on them. He's commanding us, Brother Dylan, think on them. Think on them. You see, this verse becomes a filter by which we can evaluate our virtually every form of input that we put into our mind. That every thought that we put into our mind, if we would, we, we would just do that, 
It could be a filter for our everyday life that we could filter some things in our mind. Amen? If we truly obeyed this verse, many things that are part of our normal life would be gone. Completely. Utterly destroyed. If we would do what that verse commands us to do. You see, it's impossible to discipline the mind without some refusal of the mind. So what are, what are we to reject every day, Brother Dylan? Just the opposite of what we had up there in Philippians 4 8. Hey, we're to reject those things that are not true. Hey, those things that are not honest, those things that are unjust, those things that are not pure, those things that are unlovely, things that are not of a good report. But you know what, huh? Stinking thinking. You're right. You're right. But you know what we'll do every morning? I've said this every time I've stood here, I think, but it's the truth. Hey, we'll grab that little devotion book that we've been given. We'll read that little devotion book with the one verse in it. Not even open our Bible most times because they got it printed onto the side and we'll think we've done God a favor. We'll rush out the door. And before we know it, we're thinking on things that's not true. We're thinking on things that are not honest. We're thinking on things that are unjust. We're thinking on things that are not pure. Boy, not pure, Brother Dylan. Hey, we're all men in here tonight. Hey, you, you, you think about this. You think about the eyes, what they see. You see it once, but if you take another look, you just looked on some things that are not pure because you knew what was catching your attention. You knew. That's exactly right. Then we're thinking on things that are unlovely. You say, what are you talking about, Gary? Well, when we see those things that are not pure, Brother Dylan, you're a married man or whatever, you begin to think, well, my wife, she just don't love me like she should. And uh, we, uh, you know, we're just not as intimate as we used to be and this and that. And the old devil will start throwing things upon you, upon your life, upon your life. Before you know it, that old devil's got you picking up your phone, yeah. punching in some sites you've been to, and looking at some sites that are unpure, wishing that the wife maybe look like that. Now, I'm not trying to get ugly, not trying to be vulgar, but that's where we live. Amen. This mind is full of unpure things because we've not took the time to renew it and discipline it like it should be disciplined. And until we get to that point in our life, we're going to be defeated. Because you see, that spirit, that spirit of Christ ain't going to work in us when we're unpure when we're unjust, when we've got no good report, when we're not honest, when we're not true. It's not going to dwell there, Brother Dylan. It's not that he don't want to, it's because we've pushed him out. We've said, God, right there, I'll be back to get you when I need you. Yep. That's right. It says in the James, uh, book of James, you know, double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Yeah, that's right. That class we took on James was phenomenal. Yep. That's one of, the, one of the chapters. That's all it talks about is really yep. the mind. Yep. That double minded man. Uh, and you read about the double minded men that was in the Bible mm -hmm. that God still used because. Mm -hmm. They renewed that mind and they come back. We're going to talk about that just in a minute. But I want, I want you to see, how, how, do, how do we 
defeat these things that are not true, that are not honest, or are unjust, unpure, unlovely, and I'm not a good report. We talked about this a little bit last week. Hey, we go into Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20, and we read about that armor. I told you last week before we dismissed this class, I said you better put on your armor. Amen. We're going to be talking about the mind, discipline of the mind this week. But Dylan, he's done everything he can to try to whip this old boy all week, I'm telling you. He's done it. But you know what? I've tried to focus and put that armor on. And I've tried to remember, greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. Press on, Gary. Press on. Press on. Hey, but I'm going to read it just for just, just so we, we, we get it. It never hurts to hear about this armor. It says, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Did you get that? Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Amen. We're weak, Brother Stephon. As big as Brother Stephon is, he's a weak man. But in Christ, he's strong. Amen. It says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Somebody tell me, what does that word wiles mean? Anybody? Want to take a stab at that? It's all of those old tricks in the devil's bag that he wants to throw at you. The wiles of the devil. Like Brother Fred said, he's on one side over here whispering and you got the conscience over here whispering on the other side and we usually give in to the wrong side. The wiles of the devil. That's, yeah. Yep. It never works. That's right. That's right. That's right. Verse 12 says this, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness, weaknesses in high places. It says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, stand. I love that right there, Brother Dylan. Stand. Having done all to stand, stand. You know what that's telling me? That's telling me, hey, you just plant them feet in and you just don't move, amen? Yeah. Amen. You just, you, I mean, you, you just buckle down and say, I'm holding on to Jesus Christ and devil, you're not moving me. I'm holding on. It says, 14, stand therefore having your loins girt about with the truth. You know what the truth is? That old Bible. The truth. The truth tells us to start out with the truth. Think on these things that are true. Philippians 4 8 up there. These things that are true. It's this book. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. Hey, when you stand on the thing, when you put on the truth, hey, you have that breastplate of righteousness about you. You're going to be righteous in your walk and your life. Then it goes on to say, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. Hey, always walking about in the gospel. Amen. Telling others about the gospel. That's what, hey, that, that, that's what it's all about, is telling others about the gospel. See, when you begin to tell others about the gospel and what God has done for you in your life, hey, you don't have time to think on those things that are unpure, Amen. that are untrue, that are not honest. They're not a good report. Because you're telling them the story of your life and how God changed your life. But we're afraid to do that for some reason, Brother Dylan. We think, well, they won't, they won't take me very well. They'll think I'm crazy. Yeah, well, Jesus said, Jesus told us that they would think of us as that way. They thought him to be that way too. But we know he's not crazy. And, and, and hey, if they turn you away, hey, then your blood's not on their blood's not on your hands. You try to tell them. But then we go on, we see, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. We talked a little bit last week about that, about that shield and how it's the protector, and how you can just knock things off of your life with that with that shield. How that we could unite as brother. Remember how I told you those Roman shields last week? I told you how they was made to slide down in one another. 
Hey, they could actually put those things down in one another and create a wall, Brother Dylan, that the enemy could not get through. They could make a bridge out of those things. Those old boys would put them things on their back and they could walk across whatever they needed to get across. That shield's a very important thing in your life. You need to pick it up every day. I need to pick it up every day. Amen? Verse 17, it says, in the helmet of salvation. We need to put on that helmet of salvation. What's that protecting, brother? It's protecting that head. Amen? If somebody wounds your head, you're out of the battle. You're done for. Amen. Five or six minutes without the oxygen up there to that brain, it's dead. And when that brain's dead, you're dead. You, uh, you may be here, you may be able to breathe and stuff for a little while, but you're pretty much gone. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, it, it, that hit him right there in the forehead. Hit him, bam. God knew exactly where he was aiming for. And that still amazes me to this day. He hit that big old giant with that rod. Blood. It did say he fell back. It said he fell face first. I think God just walked up behind him and pushed him over. Flipped him on the back of the head and said, you're mine. You're gone. Amen. But I want you to notice in verse 17, and it says, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Amen. I want you to notice in that, in that scripture reading, Every one of those pieces of armors that we just talked about until we get to the last part of, of verse 17 is defensive. Until you get to the last part of 17, the only offensive weapon that's given to us is the Word of God. Ain't that amazing? That's amazing that He gives us that weapon. What do we defeat the devil with, brother? That weapon. That word of God. What did Jesus defeat the devil with? He scripture. Quoted him scripture. And it said he had to flee. Hey, we got a thing we do in all you here, and I've been trying to get my men back into the swing of this thing, but we was at one time, we was quoting scriptures, and you know how we was memorizing those scriptures? We was putting them on index cards. But Dylan and Brother Fred knows what I'm talking about, Brother Stephon. We was putting those things down and we was sticking them in our pocket. And every day, throughout our day, we'd pull that thing out. We'd begin to read. So I had men in, in, my, in my class that was quoting scriptures. Brother Fred being one, Brother Dylan being, Brother Stephon being one of them. We was quoting some scripture. But you know what, man? We've got laxed. I've got laxed. I was quoting some scripture too. You know what I quit doing, Brother Dylan? Quit carrying that card in my pocket that truth the word of God I've got to go on here it says how much time do we spend watching TV mm. Kent Hughes asked that question in his book and I had to pin it down in here how much time do you spend watching TV he said take your log book when you turn that tube on and you write down the time that you turn that thing on and you keep a log book through the week and you see how many hours you sit in front of that TV and you let the things of the world come through that tube. You know where it goes? Into this mind. Bad things in, bad things out. Good things in, good things out. TV. I've got one. I watch it, Brother Dylan. But he said, if you'll pin, a, if you'll pin that down and you'll, you'll see the hours that, that you, you watch that TV, then you have another law of how many hours you spent in this book. The TV always wins. Always, he said. He said it got to be so bad in his, his kid's life and his life and his wife's life that they removed every TV that they had in their house. And you say, that, that dude's a, one of those wackos that wants to get rid of TVs. Hey, that, was just his, that was just his way of getting rid of, of, of the bad things in his life. It might do us good if we got rid of it. Amen? And quit watching the news. It'll get you. It'll, it'll mess you up. Bad things in, bad things out. 
Before you know it, you're going and talking about things that are untrue around the water keg at work, and 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 you're you're fitting right in with. Oh, I'll tell you what, Joe Biden ain't my president. Yeah, he's your president. You know why he's your president? Because God said, whoever sets the boat wrong, you need to honor him. That's right. Yeah, you may not have voted for him, but you got to honor him. Amen. That's Bible. That ain't what Brother Gary said. That's Bible. Well, I, I want you to see uh, what it says in Psalms 101, 1 through 6. It said, I will sing of mercies and judgment to the Lord will I sing. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. Watch this now, verse 3. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. A forward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. Whoso privately slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that hath an high look and a proud heart will I not suffer. Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. You know what David's great sin was? In 2 Samuel chapter 11, you go read it. His great sin was he seen a woman bathing. Where should he have been? He should have been out in war with his men. But he seen and he told him, go get her. When he went and got her, Brother Dylan, it didn't turn out good. You go over to 2 Samuel chapter 12. Old Nathan meets him. He begins to tell him a story about a poor man with a lamb and a rich man that took that lamb and old Nathan looked him dead in the eyeballs and said thou art the man thou art the man you know what some things that arise take in it's not good amen we need to Put a, put a blinder on some of the things that we look at. What time is it getting to be? Is it? Okay. So the first and most in, important thing that we need to put in this mind is the Scripture, is God's Word. Amen? We need to put God's Word into our mind. Kent Hughes made this remark in his book again, The Disciplines of a Godly Man. It says you can never have a Christian mind without reading the scriptures regularly because you cannot be profoundly influenced by that which you do not know. Wow. We'll never be changed if we don't know this book. How do you get to know the book? How do you get to know the Christ of the book? You read it. That is the Spirit of Christ in that. That is, that is the way that we talk. He talks back to us. It's through that book. That's how we get the renewing that we need. It's through the book. That's how we get the discipline. Hey, and it may be hard sometimes. We talked last week about the disciplines of that godly man, how that sometimes we just get wore out and we come in from work and we say, God, I just don't feel like reading tonight. That's when you need to go pick your Bible up. Just, uh, get away by yourself. And that's where God's going to begin to show you some things. You know why? Because you disciplined yourself to go get His Word. He may just open a gold mine up for you and show you some things that you never thought was in this book. Well, I've been there, Brother Dylan. I've been there. And I love it when he shows me a golden nugget out there. Hey, it may not be much to anybody else, but the times that it's picked Gary Finks up off of the, off of the ground and, and put me back on my feet to plant my feet back in solid, it's, it's been amazing. Yeah. Hey, Amen? It's been amazing. You know, men in God's Word, it, it meant, it, it, us as men, we should not let it be a task to have God's Word in our life daily is what I'm trying to say. It's not a task. 
It shouldn't be a task. It can get laborious sometimes. Brother Bob, how many, how many hours have you labored over a sermon or your studies? I, 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 I loved being in Brother Bob's Sunday school class for several years. You know why? Because Brother Bob was handing out that stuff that Brother Bob had studied some years. years. You know who's got some of it, Brother Fred? Brother Gary. He gave it to me. He gave it to me, Brother Dylan. He told us, take it and use it. No. Hey, God disciplined that man's mind to put things on paper so they could be a help to me and you. And that we could stand behind that pulpit that we've been called to preach from behind and we could use that one day to renew somebody's mind. Amen? James 4, 7 says this, Submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. First John 4, 4, here it is. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world. Isaiah 54, 17, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment shall, shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Romans 12, 19, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath. But rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will pay, saith the Lord. What's it saying? We need to trust Him. We need to just go with Him. Hey, the second way I want us to see the help in reading this Christian uh, literature and stuff that's given to us that I was just talking about that Brother Bob gave me. Hey, you know what that's doing, Brother Dylan? Hey, that scripture, I pinned it down here somewhere. It, it, it says, uh, that where it talks about Proverbs 2.17, iron sharpeneth iron, so men sharpeneth the countenance, countenance of his friends. You know what Brother Bob was doing when he's sharing that kind of stuff? He's just making us a little sharper. Amen. It's all through God's word. Amen. Amen. So I want us to see here tonight, and I'm not going to get through all this, but the discipline of the mind is a great reminder of garbage in, garbage out. Good in, good out. So we need to take our minds to the gym of God's Word, and we need to appreciate it, we need to chew on it, and we need to know it. Amen? Amen? If we will do that, take your Bible, turn over to Psalms chapter 1 right quick. If we would do that, we quote this every week in our you. If we would do that, if we would discipline our mind every day in God's Word, hey, we would come out a Psalms 1 Christian. I love this scripture. It says, Blessed is the man. Brother Dylan, do you like to be blessed? Oh yeah, I like a good blessing. But Stephon, you like a good blessing? It's good, ain't it, brother? Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor setteth in the seed of the scornful. Watch this now, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, watch it, does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree, planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his seasons. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. I want to be a Psalms 1 Christian. I want to have a renewed mind, a disciplined mind. And the only way to get it is to get in the book. Amen. I, I, brought, I brought something here. I'm going to show you guys something. We got time to do this. What time is it, Brother Stephon? I got, I got to show y'all this. This is a little jar of milk. This is our mind. I'm going to tell you, this is our mind. And in that jar is all the things that have accumulated in our, in our, in our mind. And we can't see through that. It's just clogged up, Brother Dylan. It's not clear. It's not clear at all, is it? Take a look through there. See if you can see me through the other side. You can't see me, no. can you? 
It's just, it's, it's all miry, mucky. Because why? Because we filled it with the things of the world. And we've forsaken God's word. But I want you to notice what happens here. This right here. Look at me, Brother Dylan. Can you see through that? Oh, yeah, I see your big old head. Brother Fred, you see that? You know what that is? It's God's word. That's God's word. Watch what happens when we start pouring in God's word into the milk, into that life. I want you to notice what happens here. If I got enough water here, pouring it in, filling it up. You see how it's overflowing right there? When we begin to fill that up, it's still a little miry and mucky down in the bottom of that. But you know what? We've overflowed with God's word. And it didn't get as clear as I wanted it to. But if I kept pouring God's word into that thing, you know what, Brother Dylan? I could bring it over there. I mean, you could see through one another. That mind, that mind would be clear. It would be full of God's word. That's how he intended us to be, full of his word. Hey, I want to remind you tonight, man, you need a renewed mind. You need a disciplined mind. Hey, we need, a, we need to be disciplined as a godly man. And if you want to be a godly man in life, you've got to get in the Word. And you're going to see every one of these dis disciplines that I'm going to give you, it's all tied right in there together is the Word being the main focus. Next week, we're going to talk about the discipline of the tongue. The discipline of the tongue. I've got you some scriptures printed off for discipline of the tongue as well. But I want you to take these scriptures and maybe this could be a good, good, good study for you throughout the week or the next couple of weeks. Take those scriptures and study them out. That first one that, 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 that's on there is one of my favorite scriptures. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Amen. We need his word. Amen. We need to go to the gym, man. Discipline in God's word. Amen. Can't use that in that book that the pastor gave me. He, 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 he talks a lot about the gym of God's word. How we need to discipline ourselves more in this. You see, bodily exercise profiteth little. Hey, but this old book will work you out to make you the man you need to be in Christ. Amen, I promise you. Amen. Amen. We're going to have to quit. It's, it's about time to go here. So uh, I'm going to ask Brother Fred, if you will, you close us in a word to your brother. Dear Lord, we come to you tonight, Lord, just to thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for your heart. Lord, we all want to be here, Lord. We just ask you to hide these words in our heart, Lord, that we can actually be doers instead of just listeners, Lord. Be with us for the rest of this week, Lord. Keep us safe, dear Lord. Watch over us. Amen. 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 Step on. There's your phone. Something going off there. Yeah, See if this thing. Should have. Yeah, it's the.